Hello, chicken nugget. <laughs> so I've already filmed an intro for this, but I did not like it, so I'm doing it again. Now, I may not be able to tell you why I am such a fashion icon, but what I am here to tell you about today is the lovely, big, bosomed, curvaceous, and voluptuous Venus figurines that have been around for millennia, otherwise known as the Paleolithic and why they were created. So, grab a bevy, try to ignore the fact that I do look like the fifth member of the Beatles throughout the rest of this video, and please, please enjoy. Ooh. Oh God. All the papers that I reference in this video, I will put in the description. Since the discovery of the Venus Impudique in 1864, there have been over 200 more Venus figurines discovered from between France to Siberia. And all of these range in age from between about 40,000 to potentially 9,000 years ago. But most come from the Gravation period, which ranged from about 26,000 to 21,000 years ago. This is my Venus that I made at uni about two years ago. She did fall off the table at one point, so I'm gonna have to do a bit of a botched boob job on her, but you know. Some of the best known examples include the Venus of Willendorf, made of limestone and red ochre, the Venus of Dolny Vestonis, I'm literally half Czech so I should know how to say this but apparently I don't, made from ceramics, one of the earliest examples of the use of ceramics in fact, and of course the oldest one, the Venus of Holfels, which dates to 40 to 35,000 years ago, give or take, you know, somewhere in that 5,000 year period. Most range from between about two and a half centimetres to ten centimetres long. They range in size and shape, as you can see. Now, swiftly moving on to the first theory of many for the purpose of Venus figurines. One of the first very Victorian and androcentric theories for the purpose of Venus figurines was that they were thought to be sexual objects for men carved by men of the women around them. Archaeologist Olga Soffer has however warned against viewing the figurines in the same way that one may view 18th century Western European art, as this may result in a misinterpretation of their real purpose. Now, there has in fact been a study that was done in 2012 that was a study on the fertility and attractiveness of Venus figurines to modern day men. So, obviously, you have to say there's going to be some sort of cultural bias already. You can't necessarily measure what the modern day man may find attractive in comparison to a man 25,000 years ago. But what they found was that because Venus figurines are generally heavier set women, but then waists don't tend to be particularly narrow in comparison to their shoulders and their hips. And, generally speaking, men prefer hourglass figures because there is some science behind it, bear with. Due to having higher levels of progesterone and estradiol during, especially during one period, people or women with hourglass figures tend to be more fertile. That is apparently the science. And therefore, men tend to find those types of figures more attractive, and as a result, the Venus figurines ended up scoring quite low on the attractiveness scales. Now, definitely, this is, this is just what I've researched here. This is not true for everyone, obviously. You are attractive as you are but that's what this study found. Just digging yourself into a hole here, yes, yes. In addition, most of the men decided that when asked what age they thought most of the figurines were, they thought most of them were at peak fertility sort of age, signaling that these figurines do very much likely have something to do with fertility. Archaeologist Nick Connard, discoverer of the whole Fells Venus figurine, said when talking about the figurines as a collective, 
Their clearly depicted sexual attributes suggest that they are a direct or indirect expression of fertility. He went on to add, head and legs don't matter. This is about sex, reproduction. The researchers doing this paper decided that, as I will also mention in another paper, the Venus figurines were kind of seen and carved as ideals of women, most likely by women, during harsh periods to show what the ideal body type was like for fertility essentially, and to have healthy children, to have a healthy mother, and to have a healthy pregnancy. So with that idea in mind, moving on to the next paper that I found. Measurements were taken of a wide range of Venus figurines. And specifically, these researchers were looking for shoulder to waist measurements and waist to hip measurements. This is essentially because the researchers of this paper had hypothesized that during the last glacial maximum, when the ice sheet was quite far down into Central Europe, the closer a population lived to the ice sheet, the larger the Venus figurines were in the fattier areas. So they went ahead and measured several figurines from several sites, and this trend was apparent. The closer to the ice sheet that the Venus figurine would have been at at the time of its carving, the larger its proportions. After having delved a little bit deeper into this paper, however, I came across a Twitter thread of academics that were slandering this paper, saying that it wasn't thoroughly researched enough, saying it was a bit dodgy how they were only measuring shoulder to waist, waist to hip, and saying that the methodology wasn't good enough, you know, general academic bollocks as it goes. Get it, but academics can be so harsh to each other sometimes, really. Anyway, I have to say that although the paper itself may not have been written as thoroughly as it could have, the actual theory doesn't sound too far-fetched. So, with that, going back to more symbolic purposes, obviously there is the potential for them to represent fertility goddesses, or a somewhat more tender hypothesis. It could have been pregnant women looking down on themselves and carving themselves from their own perspective, as I shall move on to show you with the next paper which theorized that in a more female dominated paleolithic society if we're looking at the paleolithic human population of europe as a whole these venus figurines as i said could have been from the point of view of a woman carving herself which would explain why the proportions of the body were so large in comparison to the very slender legs, the lack of head, as one in the Paleolithic can presumably not see themselves, and the lack of arms or those very small arms that we see in some of these figurines. Now, the researchers of this paper, entitled Towards Decolonizing Gender, Female Vision in the Upper Paleolithic, researchers Catherine Hodge McCoy and Leroy D. McDermott hypothesized that these statuettes were able to teach other women about their own bodies and about the stages of pregnancy. As many people have potentially decided, some of these Venus figurines could be said to be pregnant. Some look like they're in the earlier stages of pregnancy, some look slightly later on. And so, this paper was published in 1996. So following on from the feminist wave that this paper followed, which could have potentially skewed its hypothesis slightly, but you know. These researchers are suggesting that women were teaching women through the use of these figurines. When commenting on her theory, Professor Catherine McCoy said, We live in a society that has been male dominated for so long. Our own consciousness keeps evolving. These people were living in truly egalitarian societies. They were hunter-gatherers, they lived in a communal, sharing society. Women were equal. 
Now that is a very touching hypothesis, but Dutch researcher, now I'm gonna butcher this name, give me a second, Tosca Snijdela, who has been researching the purposes of Venus figurines for over a decade, has come to the hypothesis, it's a bit of a weird one, but she thinks that the overly large sexual parts of the figurines are due to the fact that when people get anxious or nervous or are about to go into a situation that might make them slightly nervous, some of them might experience a weird arousal from it. <coughs> Essentially, what she's saying is that she reckons Paleolithic people noticed that when they got a bit frightened, a bit anxious, they felt weirdly aroused by it. Feel a little bit spicy down there. <laughs> and as a consequence, these Venus figurines were carved in order to keep as good luck charms, to prevent bad things from happening, because the Paleolithic peoples associated this feeling of arousal with being kept safe from danger. Now it is very likely that they were worn as pendants or kept as charms because Venus figurines such as Venus of Holfels has a ring on the top of the neck where the head would be which it was obviously most likely a ring that a cord could be put through so that she could be worn as a pendant and this was also likely the same for many of the other Venus figurines that have been found. However, one problem that I do have with this theory is that why were only women carved in that situation and not men? Surely we would be finding examples of both. I don't know. But this one, to be fair, has been studying this for over a decade, so who knows. But those are all my theories. Those are all the, th all the theories that I have researched and there are probably several others if you have other things that you've heard of. Type it, type it, if you feel the need. Anyway, and um, yeah, I should have showed my own Venus figurine a bit more. You know what's fun about her? When you turn her to the side, she also looks a bit like an Easter Island head. But anyway, thanks. Thanks from me, and thanks from Venus. Bye.